Good evening. This is the Northern Sun Experience, joined right away by former Augustana point guard Jordan Dalton. We're down to the final weekend of the regular season. Some things have been decided, some things haven't been decided. Still fun either way. We're going to start on the men's side with Augustana, your alma mater. They clinched at least a share of the regular season title. Dan Jansen became the NSIC's all-time leading scorer. So everything's looking good for the Vikings. So looking ahead to these final two regular season games, how should they approach it? Well, first of all, I just want to say congrats to Dan Jansen. Uh, just speaks speaks to the work ethic that kid has put in uh, each and every day that he stepped on campus. And so you want to congratulate him on having, you know, obviously one of the most storied careers in Augustana and the NSIC history. Uh, so kudos to that kid. Um, as far as Augie for this weekend, I think they approach it uh, business as usual. You know, their goals have always been long-term goals this entire season. You know, they've said from the beginning they want to be one of the final 18th playing in Frisco, Texas uh, for the Elite Eight. And so I think they approach this weekend as business as usual. You know, we saw what happened a couple of weeks when they didn't come out in top-notch form. They were able to get beat by Northern State. And so I think they understand once again that once you get into regional play, it's a one-game season. And so so they don't want to take any steps back. So they don't want to relax any, or anything like that. Obviously, just want to stay healthy, but they do still want to come out with the same intensity that they've come out with each and every week. They got Upper Iowa and Winona State this upcoming weekend. Casey Schilling, by the way, named South Player of the Week. Either him or Jansen <laughs> has been the South Player of the Week eight of the 13 weeks, so it just shows their uh, brevity there. So MSU Moorhead clinched the North Division with a pair of road victories. They have an outside chance at a share of the regular season title. If they win both games, Augie loses both games. Probably not likely to happen, <laughs> but that being said, how should MSU Moorhead approach this final weekend? Once again, I still think they want to go into the conference, uh, or excuse me, conference tournament on a high note, and so they want to continue to play the same way they have been as far as a high potent offensive team. You know, they're they're already averaging 88 points a game and shooting the ball at 50 cents, 50 50 percent, excuse me, from the field. So they've been a great offensive team the entire season. So they want to keep that chemistry going. I think the only place that they can maybe gain a little bit of an advantage is on the defensive side of the ball as far as creating turnovers. You know, they only average four and a half steals per game and three blocks per game. And, and so I feel like when you have Isaac Seavely in the back line protecting the rim, uh, it should give you an opportunity to really get out there, pressure the ball a little bit, be a little bit more aggressive in passing lanes to maybe create some, some easier offensive opportunities off of turnovers. Uh, other than that, once again, we talked about it. These two teams have very, very high, high expectations themselves. And so I don't think you'll see any let up in this final week. You mentioned Seavely. He won his second North Division Player of the Week, and he still leads the conference in scoring. Well, moving outside of Augustana and MSU Moorhead, there's a log jam for second place in the North Division behind the Dragons. You marry Northern State, Minnesota Duluth, all 11 and 9 right now. After this weekend, which one of those three teams is going to emerge as the second seed in the North Division? Yeah, I, I would put my money on Northern State. Uh, we've obviously seen that they can play and beat some of the best teams in the conference, uh, especially at home. I think they've been a good team all season, but they've been a great team at home. Uh, this season. They've won their last six home games uh, and they're finishing the season out with obviously a two game homestand. And so I think they just need to find out a way to bottle that type of intensity and focus that they play in Aberdeen when they play on the road. Uh, so they've, they've been a consistent offensive team the entire season as well, uh, shooting the ball 49% from the field and, and also 42% from the three point line. So I think that consistency on the offensive end and their effort on the defensive end has been what's able to keep them in each and every game. But they have to kind of find a way, obviously the, the conversation tournament is going to be not, not going to be in Aberdeen so they have to find a way to play with that same type of intensity focus and effort uh, on the road as they have in Aberdeen this year or yeah this entire season so you like the Wolves out of that log jam now it doesn't really matter what seed they get considering right. they beat Augustana yep. could they be the most dangerous team knowing that this is the team that had the blueprint to top the best team well I think they can be one of the most dangerous teams because they play so hard we always talk about that effort takes over or overcomes a lot of mistakes that you can make on the basketball court and and I think when you look at the way the Wolves play, they never feel like they're out of any game. And from the from the tip of the basketball, they're out there, they're playing hard, they're going to be physical with you, and you're going to know they're there to, to play hard, and it's going to be a game for 40 minutes. And so I think when you have a team like that, obviously they have the offense ability to score you know, with, with some of the best teams in the conference, but they also have the intensity and just the mindset that, hey, we can beat anybody because we've proven that it's just a matter of going out there and playing for 40 straight minutes. Uh, last season was no different. You know, They took Augie uh, in overtime. And in the, in the conference tournament. Right. So they, they, they know they can play with these teams and, and they're not going to be afraid of any moment. And, and so I think the Wolves are a very dangerous team. They just have to figure out how to have some type of focus on the road this year. So Northern State definitely a team to keep an eye on. Well, is there a matchup or a team that you're watching on this final regular season weekend in particular? Yeah, I would say the University of Mary. And, and we talked about it. They started the year out just absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you know, and one of the best starts in school history. 
And then they just hit a log jam or, 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 or a losing streak there, losing six straight uh, conference season games. And, and so I really think that just kind of took the air from out under them. They were able to get two wins this past weekend, so kind of get back to their winning ways. Uh, they they in their final two games at home. And I just think with the, their offensive firepower, both inside and out, I think they could also be a dangerous team come playoff time. But they really, really have to get back to those winning ways. I thought this past weekend uh, was a great start, and hopefully they can continue that streak uh, this upcoming weekend. Yeah, people seem to forget they beat Emma. MSU Moorhead in Moorhead, and then that started that six-game losing streak, as you said. So the Marauders, a team to keep an eye on this final regular season weekend. Well, when we come back, Jordan's going to break down the weekend that was in NSIC women's hoops. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back to the Northern Sun Experience. Once again, joined by Jordan Dalton. Jordan, we're going to talk women's hoops now. Winona State, the number nine team in the country, got two more wins this weekend. They officially become NSIC regular season champs for the first time in program history. You've talked a lot about their defense this season, and they are leading the conference in defense. But what makes their offense so good? Yeah, I think one thing that makes their offense so uh, so effective is their ability to shoot the ball from behind the arc. Uh, they've made over 210 three-pointers, uh, three-point field goals this entire season, and they shoot it at a clip of 40% behind the arc and so you're getting a tremendous amount of uh, obviously production uh, from the three-point shot but it also trickles down in other aspects of their offense so teams don't really want to help off of their their shooters because they understand how prolific they are uh, from the outside so what it does it creates a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities uh, where, kid, where kids are getting straight line drives to the basket and so like I said they've been great shooting the basketball from the outside that's helped them out tremendously not only uh, from a production standpoint there but also creating other opportunities uh, elsewhere we in the offense as well. And then obviously, player of the week, Connor Nagel. Uh, she's been able to shoot the ball great all season long. Uh, knocked down 13 three-pointers this weekend with a career high 26 points. Uh, and, and it's been something that she's been consistently doing the entire season as well. Uh, you know, she's, she's already made 88 three-pointers for the, for the year and has shot it at 45%. So this wasn't a fluke weekend or anything like that. And I think that type of consistency on the offensive end, something that you can count on week in and week out, has really uh, propelled them and why they, they were able to snag their first you know regular season title in school history. You mentioned Nagel, not a fluke. Well, proved right here the second straight week she was named player of the week. And again, Winona State, their first regular season championship, also a school record, 25 victories. Well, the team right behind Winona State overall is Sioux Falls. They extended their winning streak to eight with a win over Wayne State on Friday, but then they lost by 10 to Augustana on Saturday. How were the Vikings able to stop that winning streak and slow down the Cougars? Yeah, well, I think it starts with the leadership of Coach Dave Krauth and his entire coaching staff. You know, that, that win on Saturday night was his 550th for his career and marked the 11th, 20 a 20 win season in the last 12 season and so there's just an expectation of excellence once you step on that campus uh, that coach Crowth and his entire staff set from the beginning and so I think when the players come on to that campus and come on to that team they understand what their predecessors have done and they want to be part of history too so I think it's just it's a culture there where there's an expectation of win uh, and, and win at a high rate so you got to give kudos to that coaching staff uh, for really putting those ladies in the mindset to come out there and get the win uh, as far as the game Saturday night I thought they just did a great job of locking up on the defensive end uh, especially in the second half you know they held the Cougars are just 30 percent shooting in the second half and and held them to three for 19 from the three-point line and we know USF has been one of the the best three-point shooting teams not only in the conference but in the country and so I thought Augie was able to be very very physical with them coming off screens trying to run them off the three-point line and make them take shots that they're not used to taking uh, so hopefully that win for for the Vikings can really propel them uh, and, and lead to some great momentum uh, as conference tournament comes you mentioned the Cougars poor shooting they only scored 54 points and weirdly enough a reversal of January 2nd when Sioux Falls won at Augustana by eight points. Well you said last week you liked MSU Moorhead over Northern State in the race for the North Division title. Well both teams swept this weekend both 15 and 5 both facing the same opponents <laughs> this weekend, Bemidji State, Minnesota Crookston. Do you still like the Dragons to take the crown? I do. Uh, and, and we talked about it earlier. Consistency and championship caliber aspirations have been one and the same all year long. And I just like how consistent uh, the Dragons have played in 2016. You know, since the start of the, the new year, they're 11 and 3, and their three losses have been by a combined uh, 18 points. And so they've been in every single game they've played because of their defensive ability. They have two of the top 15 scores as far as individually um, in the conference. 
And so I just think their ability to come out and stay in every single game on the defensive end, and then they have a two-headed monster on the offensive end, I think that really gives them the edge. Uh, understanding that Northern does have the tiebreaker, you know, as we talked about, I just, I like how consistent and how hard they've played in every single game this year, and that's why I do like the Dragons to still come in second place there. Again, seeding doesn't really matter all <laughs> too much when it comes down to the conference tournament, but at the same time, there's still a tiebreaker to be had. Well, as I mentioned, this is the last regular season weekend. The only thing that we know is Winona State's the number one seed in the South and the number one seed overall. So which team in the NSIC has the most to gain this weekend? Yeah, I'm going to go back to Augustana. You know, they come off a great weekend where they, they get a sweep and they, like I said, beat one of the top teams in conference. Now, this weekend, they have two home games, one of them being against Winona State Saturday night. And so we talk about how momentum and confidence, uh, some of that is immeasurable come playoff time. And I think if they're able to get a sweep at home, with including beating the number one seeded Warriors uh, on their own home, on their home court, I think that would be huge for their confidence going into the conference tournament uh, and also make a huge um, impact on the regional committee as, as well, showing that they are one of the top teams in the, in the region and they should be considered uh, to, to be in, in that regional playoff. One week from tonight, Wednesday, February 24th, the start of the conference tournament. How fun was that for you? <laughs> Absolutely. It's a, it's a blast because conference season, when that happens, that's why you play basketball. That's why you go to the, the weight room in, in, in summer. That's why you put up 150, 200 shots every single day. That's why you work hard to elevate not only your, yourself, but your team and your program to new heights. And we talked about it. It's a one-game It's a one game season every single time. Uh, and so it's just a lot of fun. I feel like the intensity is ramped up. Uh, passion is a little bit more ramped up. Uh, and, and so it's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Well, there are a lot of great teams playing right now. The U Mary Marauders, however, have been a little bit up and down this season, but their senior leaders' points are always going up. Here's Marissa DeCandido with more on the NSIC's leading scorer this season, Brittany Dietz. For Brittany Dietz, the basketball court is the biggest stage. The thing about Britt is uh, when the lights come on and the, it's time to practice or play in a game, between the lines she's going to be right up there with the best people that I've ever coached as far as just example and leadership and hard work. From her days of dominating North Dakota Class B basketball at Beach High School to her successful career at the University of Mary, Dietz has always been the go-to player on the floor. She's strong-willed, you know, and, and Britt, She's not a vocal leader necessarily, but she's, like I said, she's someone that will really lead by example. For Dietz, the choice to play at U Mary had just as much to do with her family as it did with herself. That's huge. I, I love my family and I love that they were seriously at every single game, high school through college. So I just like that I could actually play for them too and give back and entertain them a little bit and keep them young. <laughs> and they've been able to watch her become one of the top players, not just for the Marauders, but in the entire Northern Sun, this year, she's leading the conference in scoring. I like to get buckets. <laughs> it's fun to score, but I mean, it's fun to be with the team and like, it's like a second family. Her knack for putting the ball in the basket could make her the Marauders all-time leading scorer by the end of the year. It would be a huge accomplishment if I reached that, but I, at the same time, I'd just rather win games and <laughs> have fun and just go out there with no pressure and just play the game I love to do. And while she enjoys playing for U Mary, Marauders fans enjoy the chance to watch one of the best in U Mary history. She's been a joy to coach and, and someone that's really represented her, her family and her community of Beach really, really well. And she's been a fantastic example of what it takes to succeed at this level. And just uh, she'll go down as one of the, the great Marauders women's basketball players of all time. Dietz is currently 52 points behind you, Mary's all-time leader, Jessica Zundel, with a minimum of three games left. Well, when we come back, NSIC wrestling highlights, as well as a look at the first part of the conference indoor track and field championships. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. The first part of the NSIC's Indoor Track and Field Championships wrapped up this past weekend with the multi-event championships at Minnesota State in Mankato. On the women's side, Augustana freshman Olivia Montez Brown took home the conference title in the pentathlon, finishing with 3,641 points. Brown finished first in the 60-meter hurdles and the long jump, while also earning top five finishes in the high jump and the shot put. As for the men, Concordia St. Paul junior Tyler Namowitz was crowned the NSIC's heptathlon champion with 4,926 points. Namowitz finished second in the shot put, third in the pole vault, 
as well as fourth in both the long jump and 60 meter hurdles. The individual events portion of the championships will continue on February 26th. Well, some NSIC wrestling teams are starting to stick out down the stretch of the regular season. That includes the number 16 team in the country, Minnesota State. They traveled to Aberdeen to take on Northern State last Thursday. At 133 pounds, it's the freshman Paul Selman earning his team record 22nd win of the season over Carson Henry with a close 8-6 decision. And then at 157, number 7 Matt Mincy bounced back after a loss the previous week, taking down Blake Perriman by major decision. While Northern was able to win some close matches, the Mavs came away with a victory 33-6. A top 10 showdown pit number 8 Upper Iowa at number 2 St. Cloud State Thursday, but this one was all Huskies. At 125 pounds, the number 1 wrestler in the nation, Tim Prescott, takes down Malik Williams late to get the pin. St. Cloud State was up 17-0 at that point, and then at 165, it's the Huskies' other number 1 Clint Poster locking up with Zach Bennett's. Poster eventually turns things around and gets two quick points, followed by a quick pin. St. Cloud State captures its fifth straight NSIC Wrestling Championship with a 35-3 victory over Upper Iowa. Coming up next, we go under the Northern Sun at St. Cloud State. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. It's time to shine the spotlight on one of our member schools with a feature we like to call Under the Northern Sun. Tonight, it's St. Cloud State University. Greetings from St. Cloud State University. I'm Emma Kunapasik and I'm a senior on the women's basketball team. Eddie and I will be showing off our campus today located along the Mississippi. Let's get started at Husky Stadium. Our stadium received new turf in the summer of 2014, which is home to the football and soccer teams, as well as high school and community events. This provides a great game day setting along the river. In the fall, student athletes set up a dome over the field, providing year-round coverage for our teams and other recreational programs. Now, let's meet Eddie at Hellenbeck Hall. Thanks, Emma. Hi, I'm Eddie Alcantara, and I'm a senior here for the men's basketball team. The Miller Center is our state-of-the-art facility, which houses our library, learning resources, and information technology services. The building features hundreds of computers, high-tech classrooms, study rooms, computer store, and a coffee shop. We have a phenomenal fitness center with a wide range of equipment and machines that is offered to all students. Another great feature is our rock climbing wall. These are all great things to utilize to stay active. The Stewart Hall Broadcasting Center is home to UTVS Sports and Husky Productions as a state-of-the-art broadcasting center. It is a training center that provides experimental learning in broadcast journalism. Students produce Husky football, men's and women's basketball, as well as a nightly newscast. Just down the hall from UTVS is KVSC, our campus radio station in the University Chronicle, our campus newspaper. They provide students with hands-on experience in radio and print journalism. The Integrated Science and Engineering Laboratory facility is the newest building on campus that promotes hands-on learning and advanced technology learning. One of the more interesting facts about this building is their 3D printer. Atwood Memorial Center is the hub of activity on campus. It has been renovated in the past couple of years to accommodate students. It provides a space for student organizations, programming, dining services, meeting rooms, and recreational offices. Every year, the university plans events designed to bring students together to celebrate our unique tradition, spirit, and culture. The Celebrate St. Cloud program is a year-long series of athletics art and academic events designed to and for alumni students, community members, and faculty. Thank you so much for coming on our campus tour. If you are looking for any more information about our campus, please feel free to visit our website at stcloudstate.edu. When we come back, it's DB's Picks, my top five plays of the past week. The Northern Sun Experience on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back. It's time for DB's Picks, my top five plays of the past week. At number five, Jimmy's Got Ups. Upper Iowa's Jimmy Roth comes sweeping in with a huge rejection of Concordia St. Paul's Cole Olstad. Check it out from a different angle. Roth comes out of nowhere and skies high for the block. These are Jimmy's training shoes, and this is Jimmy's play at number five. 
For number four, Concordia has a little more luck on this fast break. Off the steal, the ball ricochets off Diallo Powell's foot right to Brendan Matthews for the lay-in. We'll slow this one down as Powell and Upper Iowa's Jace Hanna go after the loose ball. The ball hits Powell's shoe and bounces right to Matthews, who glides right in. This plays quite the kick at number four. At number three, three straight passes from Northern State lead to an easy bucket for Paige Watashik. Here it is again. Watashik starts at the top of the key and goes to Bethany Crossweight, down low to Miranda Ristow, and back to Watashik on the back cut. The Wolves' widely execution checks in at number three. For number two, Brendan Pineda spins like a pinata. The senior drives, spins, and somehow gets the reverse layup to go plus the foul. Check it out one more time. Pineda spins and leans into the Northern State defender, managing to put up an awkward shot that somehow goes in. Pineda's pinata act earns the number two play of the past week. But our number one play comes from a wild warrior finish. Off the missed free throw, Winona State's Riley Bambanek brings it down, pulls up, and buries the game-winning three at the buzzer to top Minnesota State. Here it is again, down by two in overtime. Bambanek takes the outlet, creates some space at the top of the key for the winning three. So not only does Riley save the day, but he also gives Winona State the number one play. Once again, a thank you to all of our NSIC member schools for their time and contributions. We'll be back next week right here with another Northern Sun Experience.